part of this workshop called Positive Leadership and we're really excited. See you soon! one hour until we give the presentation as part of a positive leadership workshop. So we are doing a presentation on our own stories and how that's related to the work that we are doing at Binboya. And of course we are going to tie that back to the whole theme of the workshop, um, positive leadership. So we'll keep you guys updated. So we came in December 2014 to meet with the Women's Association that was in charge of managing and maintaining the, um, the community center that was to be built. And during our one month stay, we uh, led a series of workshops with the youth groups in the region and women's association in the region. Um, and because it happened to be December, which is the busiest, as you know, uh, the busiest coffee harvest season, we just learned about the coffee industry. And we just, uh, through our conversation with the women's association and the um, you know, members of the community in the region, we learned about different things that we were not personally aware prior to coming. So one thing that we learned about coffee industry was the inequitable revenue that existed within the coffee industry. We as consumers from the United States and other parts of the world knew that we were paying about $60 or more um, per kilogram of roasted coffee. And through our conversation, we quickly learned that almost not none of that revenue was trickled down to the farmers that were doing most of the work throughout the year. And the second thing that we learned was the gender-based discrimination that existed within the coffee industry. So the inequitable revenue was not the only problem because a lot of the work, almost 70 to 80 percent of the work on the farm and on the household was done by women and they were not being paid as much as their male, male counterparts. So in our one month in Costa Rica in December of 2014, we had a lot of conversations, we learned a lot of those things that Cindy mentioned, right? But we didn't have any data. We were in the first phase of that, you know, empathizing. We basically empathized with the farmers but really had no data to back up the situation. We were a group of five co-founders. Um, four of us came to Costa Rica in May and spent about two months traveling across countries, visiting different farming communities to actually learn about their stories. And we documented the stories and started sharing those stories through our social media. At that point, we had launched a website with only $700 in our bank account. We had no mentors, nor any experiences in business or coffee. And that's when incubation came into place, right? So I think, you know, in the video we saw and the kind of conversation we've had, we did some of the empathizing, we did some of the ideation, right? But what we weren't able to do was very quickly prototype because you know, we weren't able to spend as much money on creating a dynamic website, we weren't able to hire people. And a lot of it is also internal, we weren't willing to spend as much time in that kind of rapid prototyping. So that's when we realized that we needed to incubate this idea a bit more because we knew this idea was revolutionary. It was going to take the coffee industry from where it is right now, where uh, roasters come to countries like Costa Rica and take green coffee, roast it but in their own countries, to now kind of jumping the curve and allowing for farmers to roast their own coffee. And we didn't have the structure because we weren't, you know, had, we didn't have the kind of training or the skills inherently in us to create that structure. So we basically worked on a structure. Uh, we got some really great mentors, including Mohit, uh, who gave us a lot of feedback. Far we've managed to enroll 10 farmers. Uh, we went from having two farmers enrolled to 10 farmers this year. With this coffee, we've managed to skip 85% of the middlemen involved. It's very well to our original story, right? So the story of Sindhi kind of going into that environment in India where she had that sense of gratitude and understanding of the people that she was meeting. And the, sto and, and the kind of similar story for me going into environments where it was uncomfortable, where I had to think outside of my comfort zone. Those kind of experiences and our stories have really impacted how our traits have developed. For both of us, kind of getting out of that comfort zone, trying something that scared us, uh, has kind of led us to this path, nowhere near where we want to be, but has brought us in this really exciting journey. Uh, and we actually wanted to um, call upon all of you who are doing kind of similar work in your different fields uh, to try something that scares you every day, um, that gets you out of that comfort zone. So I thought, so I thought I'd leave it. So I thought, so I thought, so I thought I'd leave it. Ooh.